And this video will discuss the beginning stages of a star, the uh, time actually before the object is a star, before it has fusion in the core. When a star has fusion in the core, when, when an object has fusion in the core, then we can call it a star. So we'll talk about gas clouds becoming protostars and onto the main sequence in this video. Future videos, we'll talk about the deaths of stars. And uh, so stay tuned for that. So we start in space with a giant molecular cloud, a very, very, very large gas cloud. Uh, it's hard to even say, but bigger than the solar system and much, 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 much bigger than our solar system. A cloud out of which hundreds or thousands of stars can form. There's that much material, that much mass in the cloud. And in this giant molecular cloud, let's suppose that it's cold that it's not close to a star, it's not receiving energy, and it's very, very cold. It will, uh, however, still emit light in the form of radio waves. Um, it's too cold for the dust that's in the cloud to uh, be bright enough for viewing in the infrared, but this uh, molecular cloud, the molecules, will give off uh, light, radio waves, that radio astronomers can detect and map out the uh, different types of molecules that exist in the cloud. Um, in this cloud, there's going to be some turbulence, some irregularities, it's not completely smooth, and there'll be regions where the density is a little bit higher, and the higher gravity. These, these clouds also are very cold. Um, there's, again, no star nearby to warm them up, so they're cold. We have uh, not a lot of motion for the molecules, and we have gravity. So gravity wins here in this stage of uh, forming the star. Gravity wins over any internal pressure. There's not enough uh, temperature to create uh, pressure internal to the gas cloud of any significance. Though gravity can win in regions where the density is high enough and they start to collapse. So these, these giant molecular clouds, you know, 100,000 times the mass of the sun is not uh, out of out of the realm. Uh, they're cold. There's some regions that are more dense and in those more dense regions gravity uh, causes the gas to contract, to come and form a tighter knot, higher density, and uh, that's the start of this gas on its way to becoming a star. So here's the molecular cloud that's in the constellation of Orion with the uh, belt, the three stars of the belt of Orion, Betelgeuse, Rigel. Um, this is a huge area, a huge volume of space, but there's been a molecular cloud mapped out by radio astronomers. Um, invisible light, you see a very beautiful uh, the sword of Orion, this gas cloud, and there are some young hot stars, uh, the OB type uh, stars in the Orion Nebula, giving off a lot of ultraviolet light and that ultraviolet light will ionize hydrogen atoms as the electrons um, recombine with the proton there's a good probability that the electron will make a transition from level three to level two in the hydrogen atom that is the transition that causes red light to be emitted so these are known as h2 regions h2 means the hydrogen is ionized. H1 would be neutral hydrogen, but H2, the hydrogen is ionized, and the characteristic color is distinctly red, as you'll see in some later photographs. So the Orion Nebula, it's a gas cloud that's in the process of birthing stars. The hot stars in here are uh, ionizing hydrogen. As the electron recombines with the proton, red light is emitted, in addition to other light. But um, here we have visible and infrared um, photography overlaid on each other. There's about a thousand stars in this region. We have the famous trapezium, uh, the brighter stars that are here, but there are other stars in this molecular cloud. Um, estimates are that these stars are about a million years old, which is very young on the uh, lifetime scale for stars. Um, here's another galaxy not the Milky Way, but another galaxy. All these red blobs here, H2 regions. Regions where there are stars being born, and these young hot stars are ionizing hydrogen, 
you know, we're giving off uh, the red light from those those clumps. So star formation covered, uh, you know, occurring in many many galaxies. Uh, we'll talk more about that when we talk about galaxies. Uh, the Eagle Nebula, and some sections of it that have higher resolution photography. But again, a, a cloud where the gas and dust here is actually being eroded away by uh, uh, high energy light from nearby stars. But there are certain clumps in here, dark globules, where the density is higher and are surviving. And uh, presumably those will become stars as the density is high enough to uh, keep its material. Uh, here in X-ray view and infrared view, again, there's uh, high energy around here, but there are these pockets uh, where the density is higher. You can see these bright objects down here in the infrared view. Uh, places where stars are forming, these gas clouds are contracting, the temperature is getting higher. So now it's not just radio energy that's emitted, but now warm enough that infrared light's being emitted. From this, uh, from this nebula in the regions where stars are forming. 30 Doradus, a tarantula nebula uh, in the large Magellanic Cloud. And we have an uh, example here of star clusters. Again, hundreds of stars, maybe more, that is uh, uh, in this nebula. Stars that are relatively young, bright blue stars that uh, have formed out of this gas cloud. Uh, protostar here, with uh, you can see the gas that's around this uh, protostar, um, and it has sort of an irregular uh, output of light. Um, don't need to concern ourselves with that in my class. Protostars here in this infrared view, where you see these brighter knots of material, that's where more infrared light is coming out. There are more uh, atoms uh, involved in this denser situation, and getting more light where we have more material. Uh, but situation we can see here of a gas cloud that is forming knots in it, regions of higher density, and that's where stars are forming. Uh, another view in the infrared of a, a nebula, and again these the brighter regions where stars are forming, and this the gas cloud is collapsing in these regions, in portions of it. Uh, that material warms up, the gravitational energy is changed to kinetic energy of the particles and of course kinetic energy relates to temperature so the temperature is increasing not enough to stop the collapse there's not enough internal pressure to stop the collapse but uh, it's warming up and visible in the infrared the t tauri protostars um, variable stars the first one discovered in the constellation of taurus and this is a designation that tells astronomers it's a variable star um, so we have the T Tauri star. This is a drawing, not a photograph. We don't have the uh, capability for imaging these uh, disks just yet, although it's uh, getting closer and closer. The T Tauri star has this disk around it. It's very common for things that rotate to form a disk shape in the universe. We have an example of Saturn's rings. We have galaxies, that, uh, spiral galaxies, that have this shape uh, with this rotation. The T Tauri stars kind of beam out energy from uh, the poles of the star. Uh, the disk here, this gas and dust disk, really blocks energy from going out in the plane of the disk. But there's uh, less obscuring material at the poles, and this energy gets kind of beamed out. And also, uh, don't quote me on this, but I believe probably the magnetic field of the star uh, has a role to play a little bit in the, in the beaming, but primarily the gas and dust disk is blocking the uh, uh, energy from going out in the, the disk. Energy goes out from the poles. And our main sequence. So this is not showing how the gas cloud changes its uh, temperature and uh, luminosity as the gas cloud collapses, but eventually our We'll, this gas cloud, the, the dense region will uh, uh, get hotter and hotter and the core will reach fusion temperatures and then the star would be on the main sequence. So the protostar is when we're moving from the gas cloud, the diffuse, uh, the little knot of material getting more and more dense and finally when the star has fusion in its core it'll become a uh, 
a main sequence star at the bottom of this main sequence um, and then change slowly over its lifetime on the main sequence and then change more rapidly as it nears the end of its life. We're not going to talk about the end of life in this video. But the process of star birth, our conclusions are from observing this in many parts of our galaxy and in other galaxies, as we have gas clouds that are collapsing and knots of material, high density pockets, forming stars in these gas clouds. And once the temperature of the core gets high enough, then we get fusion and the star gets onto the, uh, uh, the main sequence. Here's a cluster of stars in our galaxy, the Pleiades, you know, in the constellation of Taurus. And we're seeing the bright stars here, and we're also seeing dust around these. It's reflecting the starlight. The, the stars are mainly blue. The dust reflects that blue light to us, and uh, nice visual. It's, it's a photograph, not a painting. If we look in the infrared, the dust becomes more prominent. These stars don't uh, overwhelm the dust as much in this photograph. The stars are not, they're emitting more blue light than infrared. Uh, but now the dust, we can see better, it emits in the infrared. It has a temperature and uh, gives off light in the infrared. We get more of a mapping of the dust in this region. Where the Pleiades cluster formed, we still have a lot of dust remaining. So, that's our, our story for uh, protostar down to main sequence. We have the gas cloud collapsing because it's cold. It doesn't have internal pressure. It has these pockets where there's higher density. And in that uh, situation, the uh, gravity can win over internal pressure. Gravity causes the gas cloud to collapse in that pocket. And eventually... Uh, the gravitational energy is becoming kinetic energy of the particles in the, the center of this gas cloud and it shrinks, 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 shrinks and uh, becomes a star on the main sequence when fusion takes place. So keep reading that material, ask your instructor some questions.